Yeah, this is part two. Yeah, but when she left me to die, my aunt Shakita Washington, who was a hoarder, insane child abuser. When I got when I came back over there to try to help her with that house, to try to save that house, she was in the front yard arguing with little seven-year-old girls talking about they're saying her name wrong. That's not my name. That's not my name. Don't say my name like that. I said, Shaquita, go off in the house. You know what I'm saying? Come on, please, go off in the house. That's how crazy she was. She was arguing with children. How crazy she was. She used to give me toys when I was a little bitty boy and take them back from me. You know what I'm saying? Tell me, oh, well, you can, you can play with it when you come over here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Mom... You know what I'm saying? My mother would never say, hey, there's something wrong with her. And my mom was supposed to keep me away from her. But my mom was an abuser, too. So, you know, I'm not talking about my mom right now. That's another story. I'm talking about these people that sold a house that I was the only person taking care of for 20 years, saving it from the city. Because, see, the city was going to take it 20 years ago. Because of the whole, they was gonna de they was gonna destroy it. Like many houses in the neighborhood, I've documented that too. There's many houses in that neighborhood that nobody's family took care of, and so the city went on and destroyed the house. There's nothing but you know a field there now. Or they done rebuilt over the field. But yeah, the city allowed this man next door that my they probably used to work with my cousin at the police department to terrorized me the whole time. I believe my cousin was calling him and talking to him and telling him to do me this way and do me that way. I had to put fences up to keep this crazy man, James Thompson, from climbing through my windows, coming in my house with the police, going through all my stuff. There's no telling what he stole from me. Every time I would tell my aunt about how he was doing me and how he drug, you know, he, he, he had his tree trimmers cut a tree down and dragged the limbs across the, the house that I was taking care of and destroyed the roof and there's nothing I could do about it because my aunt left me with no way of communicating with her. You know, who does that over an argument, over a, a promise that I made to help her fix that house and keep her from going to jail? I didn't even have any tools. I didn't even have any money. I, I didn't even have a car. And I would walk and find pieces of wood and God would give me this and God would give me that. And I would I, and I started working, you know, what I'm saying piecing that house together from the outside to make it to where the city didn't have a reason to come on the inside. And it was like a full time job of 20 years. And even though I wasn't staying there at time, I made it a point to go by there and make sure the yard was cut. People started parking your cars. And, you know, making it look like it did when she was living there. And I had to come straighten that out too with no help. The electricity was pulled off the house several times. I'm the one that put it back up. Not to mention, I did the electric there, the plumbing there. There was a lake of sewer water covering the whole backyard, which on that alone would have condemned the house. I'm the one that dug it out, dug out the whole sewer line. And while I'm digging out the whole sewer line, she wouldn't even help me get the parts to put it back in. So I had to piece it together with things I found. But at least I was able to drain all of that sewer water. It was so bad that a plumber wouldn't even come out to fix it. But I did. You should have seen how she worked me. She'd be carrying big, heavy bags, like 50 pound bags of bull, just trash, walking with, you know, with a cane catching the bus, going to bingo. Get to bingo and pull out like 10 elephants and set them on the table. Everybody in Oklahoma City know about it. You know what I'm saying? She, I guarantee you when she went to Shaquita at Washington, when she went to Ohio, she was destroying those properties and those rental properties, those apartments. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you she destroyed those apartments too. And I guarantee you there's a history of it. But yeah, these are the type of people that I was dealing with. And that crazy, insane daughter of hers that was molesting me as a child. And I could have had her arrested a long time ago. But, you know, like I told her, I saved your life. She didn't even know what I meant. 
You know, I saved your life too, Jan. No, I saved your life by not reporting you to the police for molesting me when I was a child. You know what I'm saying? And then you continued to molest me and try to destroy me because you knew you didn't want this story to be told. See, there was things in that house that could have proven my case. She wanted all of my stuff destroyed, all my artwork, all the pictures that would have proven. But I got pictures. They're not developed yet, but one day I'm going to develop them. Or I'm going to let the courts develop them to prove my story on how you couldn't even open up the door but to squeeze in to, to, because there was wall-to-wall -wall trash and ticks and fleas and rats and mice and varmints all through that house, holes all in the ceiling, walls, and floor. Only thing I could do was cover them up with pieces of cardboard and pieces of wood that I found because no one would even help me get a car. And then I was dealing with this crooked ass system of white supremacy here in Oklahoma City that was trying to destroy me too. Now, if you got the city trying to destroy you and you got your crazy, murderous, rapist, child molesting family trying to destroy you, you like in a no win situation for real. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I stood for the longest time, dealing with these insane people, you know what I'm saying, that have literally murdered people. Ain't no telling what, how many children that woman raped and, and molested in Tulsa when she was in Tulsa. And she used to stay, you know what I'm saying, off of Felix Drive or something like that in Midwest City. Should have seen what she did to that house in Midwest City. And you see, I was the cleanup man. As I got older in my teens and stuff like that, I had been dealing with helping her clean up her hoard, you know, ever since I was young. So I became a master at it. And so every time she was in a fix, it would be me that would save her. You know what I'm saying? Nobody else. Her crazy ass, insane mother. But now they sold the house that I was living in when I was sick. You know what I'm saying? When I was old and try to destroy all my artwork and my legacy. And Oklahoma City, let them do it. I just had recently, I got a video on my webpage of a car that uh, was sitting out in front of my house. You know what I'm saying? Tags up on it, but you know, I didn't have a way of fixing it. And, and the city, the cops came and said, hey, you're gonna have to move this car because it's not running. And I said, sir, I'm sick and stuff like that. I got it on video. And, and, and I said, I'm gonna need some time because I don't have no family, I don't have nobody helping me. And the cop was gonna give me a month to move my car, a car in front of my house. But they are gonna give me 30 days to move out of a house that I have been taking care of for 20 years and tell me that's okay. And then all these crooked ass lawyers, every time I would try to contact a lawyer and tell, tell them what my cousin did, they saying, well, she didn't have no, I said, my cousin didn't even tell me, ma'am, that, that, you know, didn't even give me as a, as a human being a chance to get my stuff away from the house. If she was going to sell it, wouldn't it be, you know, her, her responsibility a little bit, you know what I'm saying, in this crooked ass system, you know, your, your, your crazy ass laws that, you know, you're telling me there's no law that's going to, no, no kind of, you know, nothing I can do to get some satisfaction for this woman trying to destroy my life that was raping me as a child? I didn't tell her that, but I'm gonna tell the world now. It, uh, uh, she sold the house without even telling me, man. Well, she didn't even have to. You know, There's no law that says that she had to tell you. You know what I'm saying? She can you know, sell the house. It was her house. She could... I said, oh my God, these ain't the laws that I'm supposed to be dealing with anyway. These are beast white supremacy laws. You know what I'm saying? It's disrespectful. This, this, look at how they let Trump they talking about they're going to let him be president again after he done murdered cops and, you know what I'm saying? This is a beast white supremacy system. This is not laws. These are, this is a lawless, insane, shithole country, you know what I'm saying, of criminals, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and in my Native American laws, somebody would have said, oh, no. In a real law justice system, somebody would have said, oh, no. You can't do that man like that. You got to give him some kind of time. He's an artist. Another thing too, the government's trying to destroy me because there's no black uh, Indian artists. You never hear about them, but I'm warned that Oklahoma City been hiding for 20 years. Oklahoma City been hiding me. Galen Culver, is this a great state of what? 
did a story on me 27 years ago, but now they don't want to hear nothing about me. You know what I'm saying because I can prove that Indians were black and brown and red people. They didn't start becoming white until they was raped by the beast, by the white supremacists. You know what I'm saying? They started turning them white. The Indians were black, and that's 574 indigenous tribes, you know, Native American tribes that were federally recognized. And my grandmother told me I have 30 tribes inside of me, but they're only giving me one 30-second seminal. Huh? They ain't even, I don't get to claim none of my other Indian heritage, but these white people are claiming they Indian? Come on now. Yeah, I thank Maria for doing what she did. I thank God for giving me the strength to do this because I'm the only person that can. I'm fixing to prove that I am a real Native American. I'm gonna prove that I've been oppressed and terrorized here for 57 years. And I'm suing the United States government for terrorizing me and violating my civil rights and trying to make me into a criminal for the last 57 years. And that's my word and I'm sticking to it. This is part two. There will be a part three to this. Hey Amen. Yeah, for all this time when I was working on that house, all I had was a bike. Them crazy people turned the water on so I could clean up her hoard. Maria Ann Blevins turned the water on so I could, you know, clean up that house so they could sell it with all my stuff in it. But let me go through the pandemic without no water. Never called me. When Maria Ann Blevins would call me, she'd call me private. Come on now. Because she knew one day, she was hoping that one day I wouldn't figure out who she was. She's an insane, sadistic, child abusing, narcissistic sociopath. You know what I'm saying? And she tried to kill me and tried to destroy me. And she used to call my artwork sticks. She's insane. You should see the horns growing out of her forehead. She has nails like an animal, like a beast, like a dog or something. Her nails, toenails, a mother's nails. They don't even look like human nails because she's not human. What human would do their blood like me? Animals don't even do that. Yeah, she sold my house that I had been taking care of, only me, with all my artwork in it, hoping that I would lose everything. But I, one thing that I won't lose is God. How could she sell God? <laughs> Checkmate, whore. Amen. What a wonderful day, the Lord. Another thing, I'm supposed to be mad. I apologize to the jury and anybody that hears this. But I, if you listen to what's, if you really listen to what's happening to me, what happened to me, you'll see I have every right to be upset. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just venting. What a wonderful day the Lord has made. Amen.